guys, so we are now at Paris Blockchain Week and here with you on the Twitter box of all the points telegram and our guests are from uh, UNICEF, United uh, Nations International Children's Emergency um, now from uh, Sana Medi, uh, who is an um, uh, innovation specialist at uh, UNICEF Ventures and uh, Arun Maharajan, who is blockchain lead at UNICEF and interestingly, UNICEF is the first UN organization uh, which uh, launched uh, the crypto fund back in 2019. So it's great to see that blockchain and crypto are used uh, for such good causes. Great to hear about you both here. Yeah? Thank you, thank you for having us. So can you uh, tell us uh, about this decision of UNICEF? Like, uh, why, why was it implemented and why uh, did UNICEF see the need of uh, for sure. Launch the crypto for sure. Um, well, the UNICEF. Uh, sure. The UNICEF Office of Innovation uh, had launched a venture fund uh, back in 2024. Um, this venture fund really looks at making early stage investments into startup solutions. Um, we provide up to $100,000 of investment to Frontier Technology Solutions. Uh, this includes blockchain, drones, virtual and extended reality, AI and data science. Um, we invest only in open source solutions that are based in UNICEF program countries. Um, and we make these investments, we invest anywhere between 20 to 25 solutions a year. Um, the crypto fund was launched uh, much later, um, in October of 2019. Uh, the crypto fund is essentially a part of the venture fund, so it allows us to do exactly what the venture fund does, which is invest in startup solutions. Um, but the crypto fund also allows us to accept, hold, and disperse cryptocurrencies. The reason for launching the crypto fund was very much because of the efficiency and transparency that the technology brings, as well as uh, to really help UNICEF as an organization build its muscle memory in what it means to operate in a digitally financed future. So that's the intersection of where we sit, uh, why we exist, and uh, why we're trying to, uh, you know, really be able to see how we as an organization can use, uh, use, be engaged in the crypto space, but also use uh, the new technology to see what we can do with it and how we can impact the lives of children uh, through the crypto funds, um, doing doing our activities. Yeah, that's quite important. Uh, can you add anything there? Uh, from my side, uh, uh, what I would like to add is the Ventures team is not only about encouraging projects around the world, but we also build stuff. So we build our own pilots. We may work with vendors, we may, we may, we may work with these project teams, or we may build it ourselves. So we have like software engineers in-house and all that. It's like slightly unusual setup for, for like UN agency, but, but we are a little startup. So so we actually build stuff, we you know, uh, pilot things in then a blockchain web three space in order to learn how it works and you know so on. Like we, we have to get our hands dirty. Like for example, we are right now building a building a DAO. Uh, I made a snapshot space myself, uh, bottled around it and then and then explain how it worked to the rest of the organization and so on. So that's, that's a part of it. And uh, which uh, areas are you focusing on to invest? Like are you finance, you mentioned DAOs? What are other areas where blockchain or crypto can be implemented and considered? So some places, I can speak to the ones that we're currently looking at and Arun can maybe speak to... I can I can speak to the ones that where we're currently investing, and Arun can maybe uh, shed some light on uh, the new areas that we're looking to invest in. Um, but we've already uh, so from from the most recent calls that we've done, we've invested in a cohort which specifically looks at um, financial inclusion. So how can blockchain uh, support financial inclusion, bank the unbanked, uh, and really you know help them engage in savings, learn about crypto, uh, and, and, and have a financial holding of their own. Um, then more recently, we invested in a cohort that's looking at more, I would say, digital inclusion. Uh, specifically, we had three use cases that are looking at connectivity. So how can we uh, provide connectivity? How can we pay for resources in a more streamlined manner? Um, and, and we recently launched a call looking at climate tech. Um, 
in the climate tech space, it's really exciting actually because there's so much happening in terms of climate, in terms of climate solutions and in terms of the need as well uh, of what needs to be solved, um, which is very similar in a parallel universe to, to the blockchain, blockchain world, right? There's a lot being built, a lot being explored and I feel like seeing synergies between the two can be super powerful uh, and we actually have just closed the call and we're hoping we have some good uh, blockchain use cases coming out of the climate call as well. Uh, later this year, we have a few more plans. So, the program side, by program I mean how actually children are influenced is what she spoke about. Uh, but we can also look at it more, more technically as well as far as calls, calls are concerned. So, that's anyway something that we do. But apart from that, right now we are looking very seriously in, in, in exploring and actually doing pilots in cryptocurrency in uh, cash transfer programming. So cash transfer programming is something that a lot of humanitarian agencies around the world do. Traditionally, it is literally taking physical cash in a truck, driving it to wherever it's needed and then handing it over to people. Uh, for example, a, re a refugee or you know, somebody who's, who's been in a, in a, in a, in a natural disaster or, or you know, whatever, right? So that's what has been happening traditionally. Uh, and of course, uh, now th there are of course digital bank accounts and all that, but we are trying to push the envelope further using cryptocurrency to make it faster, of course, to make it cheaper because we are talking of a, a disbursement in dozens of countries and in you know, situations and of course more uh, more transparent uh, so that the rest of the world uh, can you know see uh, what's you know going on so that's that's a very very large uh, focus uh, right now and in which regions do you want uh, the startups and where do you see the uh, most need for the funding of startups can i take this or yeah. Uh, so we fund startups in what is called as the UNICEF program countries. So this is typically the, the global south. Um, and so it's, most of them are in Africa, uh, Latin America, uh, Middle East, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and then, and then so on. Like for example, we won't fund startups incorporated in the UK or, or North America or Germany or any of these places. Um, with respect to the future, I think we are a global organization looking globally. So we focus on the on the you know, use case. We don't necessarily look too much at which country it comes from, but we look at the use case and if, and if we are very convinced about the use case and the team and all that, we mentor them of course. And then whatever that application is, we help that be deployed in UNICEF country offices all over the world. So the solution could be, I don't know, from uh, from India, for example, but it can be deployed in Bolivia. So so that's you know something that we do. And I'm from Ukraine, and I know UNICEF uh, provides quite a lot of humanitarian aid uh, to Ukraine. And uh, what kind of solutions do you have? Ukraine, do we have uh, we don't startups? currently have specific investments in Ukraine. Uh, but yes, of course, UNICEF as an agency is working as hard as they can. Uh, we know we have our supply and procurement team that is working very hard uh, to deliver aid in various forms. Um, and, and that's really our response to, to, uh, to the ongoing uh, scenario. Yeah, thanks for the support. And as well, currently, does your crypto fund accept only Bitcoin and Ethereum? Yes. Plan as well to accept any other cryptocurrencies in the future? For, for the current time, we are looking at Bit Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, and we do, we, we, we are looking, we're constantly looking and reviewing uh, our basket of cryptos. Uh, but at the moment, it is still very much Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, do you use as well stable coins? Not at not the yet. moment, not at the moment. And you hold Bitcoin and Ethereum, you don't convert it back to fiat? No. We, we, hold the asset in its native form, um, we hold, uh, we accept, we hold and disperse it in its native form and we also require that our startups that are receiving investment in crypto hold uh, the assets in its native form and make their first transaction uh, in the crypto they received it as they received it. Um, and so they're required by our contract to keep crypto as crypto um, and that's really because we'd like to showcase and deliver uh, complete transparency to our donors who are contributing to the crypto funds.
And how does it impact you, the volatility of cryptocurrency? Like Bitcoin, Ethereum, they went quite down from the last year, as well for the budgeting months, so both for you as a fund and for the startups you give donations to. So, um, I, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great question and it's a relevant question uh, at the moment. Uh, but the way we the, the way we structure our contracts is one the way UNICEF looks at or looks at uh, sort of crypto is that we consider it as an asset so we don't usually um, look at the valuation or the fluctuation um, for our startups of course we have built in in our contracts uh, possibility for us to uh, reduce or increase their work plans based on you know the market scenarios so if there's a beyond X percentage, if there is a fluctuation, then we are more than happy to work closely with our startups to understand how it's impacting them and how we can then best support them um, and their needs as an organization. And can you share as well the future plans for UNICEF, uh, crypto fund, and blockchain activities? And uh, well sure. How can startups I mean, uh, be engaged? We, 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 we continue to have the crypto fund, uh, we're making investments in startups, we launch calls two to three times a year, and we invite startups to apply to the fund at any time. We accept applications on a rolling basis, so all companies are uh, based in program countries. There's a list on our website for you to refer to uh, which are the specific program countries. There are 159, I believe. Um, so see if you're eligible and apply. We accept applications on a rolling basis. We're continuously looking at new and emerging applications of frontier technology, especially blockchain. Uh, and if you have something exciting, uh, startups are more than welcome to apply. Yeah, great. Thank you for Thank sharing you. your uh, expertise Thank and you. your experience. With Thank you so much. Thank you for having us.